and welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where we've got another debut for you today on the channel. This puzzle is by Jay Dyer, and she's created a puzzle called Quorum Rings, which is a well, it's a redolent title. I'm not sure what it what it means though, but it, that's what it's called, Quorum Rings. Um, and you can see we've got some diagonals, some killer cages and a little killer clue and nothing else at all in this rather sparse grid therefore no given digits and we're going to have to uh, we're going to have to rely on our wits I think, today to get through this one testing reports are that this is another of these staggering puzzles that we seem to be featuring so regularly at the moment we are very fortunate indeed um, what do I want to mention before I before I read you the rules only a couple of things well some quite big news to be honest um, over on Logic Masters India, over the weekend and for the next week, uh, they are hosting a sort of unofficial World Puzzle and World Sudoku Championship. Um, so this is the timetable, and you can see there's an awful lot going on. It's um, it's not an official World World Championship because, of course, normally the official World Championship, everyone descends on a particular location, and you sort of do it do Sudoku or puzzle exams for a week. Um, they can't do that because of COVID, so it's going to be run remotely. Uh, and, but there's still an awful lot of stuff going on, and they're they're doing some great social panels as well. And in fact, Mark and I are going to be hosting this one, I think the authors panel so as and when I get more information on what's going on there I'll let you guys know in case you want to tune in but any of you who are sort of into the competitive scene definitely check it out I'll try and remember to put a link under this video but as I say it's on Logic Masters India starting on Saturday um, other than that just uh, just a huge thanks to those of you who spent the time and watched the Clover video that we hosted I think it, it was um, a couple of days ago the video came out in the morning and it's got some great reviews and it's basically Clover going through my solve of her puzzle and talking about how she thought about things in a different way to me and I think that this really does have legs I mean it's helped by the fact that Clover is such a brilliant commu communicator I'll try and remember to put a link to that video as well because you really should watch it if you've not had a chance um, but if you are a constructor if you're watching one of these videos and you think ah I've got something interesting to say about the way Simon or Mark approach that puzzle uh, or something interesting to say about how your puzzle you know how you put your puzzle together do you think about making us one of those reaction videos I think it's clearly something that you guys the audience want to see more of and we are we would we'd be delighted to share more videos like that with you so let's hope that it's the start of a series um, anything else to mention no I don't think so just do check out what we've got going on on patreon it really supports the channel it keeps us going and it is the best Sudoku club on earth I kid you not um, so uh, I'll try and remember to put a link to that on the video as well just up there now um, right let's get to the rules of Jay's puzzle here they are normal Sudoku rules apply digits may not repeat on either main diagonal marked on blue so we've got diagonal Sudoku today so on that diagonal there you've got to see the digits one to nine once each the same on the positive diagonal it's called the positive diagonal because on a graph of if, if this was the y-axis and this was the x-axis this the slope of this line would be positive the slope of this line would be negative so this is you've guessed it the negative diagonal um, now in cages digits must sum to the small clue in the top left corner of the cage digits cannot repeat within a cage so we've got normal uh, killer Sudoku rules so those three squares sum to 22 those also sum to 22 but you can't repeat a digit so what you can't do is something like um, that that although these nines don't seem to break the rules of Sudoku they don't share a row column or box they do look share a cage and that's not allowed um, anything else yes the clue outside the grid gives the sum of the digits on the indicated diagonal right so those six cells there add up to 29 digits may repeat along this diagonal if allowed by other rules well okay so that means obviously they can't repeat in those two positions because that's going to break the rules of normal Sudoku but absolutely for example those two cells could be the same number um, now do have a go the way to play is to click the link under the video as usual now I get to play with Maverick flying past my window as usual let's get cracking that sounds actually like a helicopter Maverick's hired a helicopter today not a plane um, now now I mean this is screaming the at me isn't it um, 
but maybe we can do we can do some other things here. Let's just have a think about this. I mean, the 11 cages have got to be one, two, three, and five. The 10 cage has got to be one, two, three, and four, which is instantly a little bit interesting because we've now got a one, two, three, four, five quintuple in row three and a one, two, three, four, five quintuple in column three. Uh, so I guess we can tidy some of this up actually, because that means that in this quintuple, the four in this quintuple is definitely one of those three cells. So that cell can't be a four as well, or we would repeat a four in the 10 cage. Uh, yeah, similarly, the five must of course be in this domino in the quintuple, so we can't put fives down there anymore. Now we might be able to do the same thing down here Yes, the five in this quintuple is definitely in one of those three cells, so it's not there. Yeah, oh, <laughs> okay. Okay, Simon, well done on your use of Sudoku to crack this Sudoku. In this quintuple, where is the four? Well, it's only there, apparently. Good grief, man. Honestly, right, so that's a four. We've got a digit in the grid in well, in six and a half minutes, so this is absolutely rolling. What a simple puzzle. We're basically done. Although we probably haven't, or we probably aren't nearly done, are we? Um, one, two, three, four, five. Ah, okay. Let's think about this in the context of this 12 cage. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, because what's the minimum these six cells could add up to well it's going to be 12 plus another nine because i can't make six cells add up to less than 21 because one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six is 21. now that means these squares here have to add up to at least nine and as that means they must have a five in them because if they if this is a one two three triple they only add up to six six plus twelve is eighteen that's not that's less than 21. These are the knowledge bombs we get to share with you. So there's definitely a five now in that domino, which means that square is not a five. And we're getting, we are whittling away at this. Um, yeah, I can go a little bit further, I think. Maybe one further. There must be a three in here as well, because if this was one, two, five, these six cells would only add up to 20, and that still doesn't work. So there must be a three in one of these three cells, which means that square is not a three. So now this is down to one or two. Uh, oh, I don't know. I don't know whether the three is in the 10 cage here or the 11 cage here. So I don't think I know about this digit. Uh, I can't quite do the same thing over here as well. This 22 cage has sort of adulterated the Fistimafel ring, which would otherwise have just been full of low digits. Um, oh, there's got to be a 9 in the 22 cage. How many cells was the 29 diagonal? Six. Oh, six. <laughs> so it's averaging basically very close to five. And the numbers one to nine, if you average them, you will get a five. So this diagonal is probably not where we start the puzzle. Um, we've got 11 here. Um, okay, so now I'm actually feeling a bit stuck. I mean, is it Fistimafel? Is that what we've got to think about here? And sorry, I keep mentioning this without context, but I know many of you will be familiar with the Fistimafel ring. The Fistimafel ring and I won't prove it unless I, look, I think it looks obvious, but is basically a statement of fact about any Sudoku. And it's, it's the fact that this blue ring, which contains 16 digits, if you count them, they are the exact 16 digits that appear in the orange cells. And it, I hope that there are some of you out there for whom that is the first time you've heard that. And I hope your minds are blown in the way that mine was when I first learned that fact. And there are loads of beautiful proofs of it. Maybe I will get to share one with you in a second. Let me um, let me just stare about this. So this is telling us 
that most of the orange squares are very low digits because of course if you look at these these cells in the ring they are ones twos threes fours and fives only so i've got to put ah uh, <laughs> i've got it i think have i got it this is very similar to what we did on the channel the other day so we proved on the other day with Fistimafel that a knight's move puzzle could only have one digit that wasn't in the Fistimafel ring. Good grief. This is so beautiful. It really is. This is absolutely gorgeous. Right. J. Dyer. Goodness me, what have you done here? Because this, this is absolutely beautiful. And I am going to have to prove Fistimafel. My phone is going bananas. Good grief. I'm so sorry about this if you can hear it buzzing. Um, let, let's prove Fistimafel. I think that's what we're going to start with. Because it's I'm going to need it in order to show you um, what I've noticed about these low digits. So, how do we prove that thing I just told you about these 16 cells? Well, what we do... The first thing we do is to highlight this row of the Sudoku. I'm going to highlight that in blue. Now, I may not know the exact disposition of digits along this line, but I can say something quite profound about it. I can say that this row of the Sudoku will, when correctly completed, contain a complete set of the digits 1 to 9. So this row is one set of the digits 1 to 9 in some order. Don't care about the order. This row is also one set of the digits 1 to 9. This box, box 4 of the grid, is also one set of the digits 1 to 9. And this box is also one set of the digits 1 to 9. So these blue cells I've highlighted are four sets of the digits 1 to 9 in some order. Now what I want to do is imagine I pick up all those digits and I put them in a bag and they're in this hand. So I've got a bag of blue digits here. Now I'm going to highlight a different four sets of the digits 1 to 9. And when I've done that, it'll be clear that the, both bags because will contain the same digits. So what I'm going to do is highlight column 1 in orange, column 2 in orange, column 8 in orange, and column 9 in orange. So again, we could say that this is a complete set of the digits 1 to 9. This is as well. So here in orange, I've highlighted four sets of the digits 1 to 9. I'm going to put all the orange digits in a bag in this hand. So I've now got a bag of blue digits and a bag of orange digits. But I know in both cases, both bags contain four sets of the digits 1 to 9. So both bags contain identical digits. Now, let's look at that digit there. Let's say this was an 8. I don't care what it is, but let's just imagine for the sake of example this is an 8. What about, what if I went into my blue bag and found an 8 and threw it away? And I went into my orange bag and I found an 8 and threw it away. Well then clearly both bags still contain the exact same digits because I've removed the same digit from both bags. They were equal before, well, if I remove the same thing from both of them, they're still equal. Well, if I can remove this cell, and I can, because this, this digit here was definitely in the blue bag and it was definitely in the orange bag, because it's a blue and orange coloured cell, I can do that for anything. All of these cells that have both colours. I can remove the digit that would appear in all of those cells from both bags. And once I've done that, it's very clear that the blue bag and the orange bag still have the same exact digits. And this is this is proved what we were talking about before. But now, so this, this is what's called the Fistimafel ring. But now this gets completely crazy because let's imagine. Well, let, let's, so the, I'll explain how I got to this thought. I was thinking about, wow, I've got to put lots and lots of low digits into these cells. And then I was like, but hang on, both main diagonals 
have to contain all of the digits, not just the low digits, where are they going to go? And that's quite an interesting question. Where are the high digits going on these diagonals? So let's imagine for a moment that there is a digit that is not at a digit in this puzzle. So from the digits 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, let's pick one digit and say it's not on this blue ring. What could we say about that digit with regard to the main diagonals? Well, if there is a digit that isn't in the blue ring, it's going to have to go, it can't go in orange because we know that orange cells and the blue cells are equal. So if, if the digit is not in blue, it is also not in orange. And that means on this diagonal, the only place for this digit that's missing from the blue ring is in one of those three cells. But on this diagonal, the only place for that digit is in one of these three cells. Simultaneously, that digit will have to be, it will have to be on the negative diagonal, it'll have to be on the positive diagonal, the only place it can be is here. So if there is a digit in this puzzle that is not in the blue ring, it has to go in the centre of this puzzle. It has to. And that means there can only be one. There can only be one such digit, because if there was a second digit that wasn't on the ring, well, that digit would have to, by logic, be on top of this digit. And you can't make this a Schrodinger cell. I keep talking about Schrodinger cells at the moment, but it's not possible to have a cell in a Sudoku that is simultaneously two digits at the same time, because the, you, know, you can't have situations where the cat is both alive and dead. It won't work. So that means that there is a one digit in this puzzle, maximum, that is not on the ring. Now, if there were no digits, because we've only put the digits 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 on the ring so far, these digits would have to be 9, 8, 7 and 6. 9, 8, 7 and 6 add up to 30, not 22. So that means that there is a digit in this puzzle that is not used on the ring. It's going in here. But that means that this 22 cage has to take the other three digits because otherwise there would have to be two digits, two different digits in the middle cell. Well, if I'm choosing from the digits 6, 7, 8 and 9 and I've got to put three of them in, that, in this 22 cage, you've got to put 6, 7, 8 and 1 in. That's the only way of doing it. If you try and put 9, 6 and 7 in, you're already at 22 and the other cell can't be a 0. So I think that central square is a, is a 9. And that's what I think. That's what I think. That's my second digit, a nine in the middle. And that's quite complicated, but utterly, utterly beautiful. I, I don't think I would have got this if it wasn't for the, the puzzle I did the other day about knight's moves, where it, that, that doesn't have diagonal constraints, but you can show there's a similar constraint in a knight's move Sudoku. There can only be one digit that is not on the Fistemafel ring. Um, so, it turns out experience at cracking hard puzzles does help. Now, what does this mean, though? Well, the answer to that is I don't know, actually. I'm staring at this desperately trying to work out what it means. I can see that I've now got four ones in the Fistemafel ring. So that means each of these orange two by twos has, oh, I see, now I do, I do see what it's gonna do. So that because each of the cages, there are four cages in the Fistemafel ring and each of them has a one in it, you've got to allocate four ones to the, fifth, to, to the orange squares because there must, and, and you obviously can't put two ones in any one box. So there must be a one in each of them. Now that means that square has got to be a two. So our third digit is a two, and that two might be helpful. So now I've got one, three, five here, which is nine, which means these squares have to be the other digits that from the triangular number of six. So they have to be two, four, and six. And now we can get rid of the three pencil mark there. I think I'll get rid of the five pencil mark. Um, this two is coming out of there. My phone's still going bananas. Um, these squares are seven, eight, and nine. That's not nine. Okay, look here. This square here is not a two. So the two in the 10 cage is in this domino. That means those squares are not twos. Um, 
I am going to throw my phone out of the window in a minute. Um, come on, what is going on then? I can't concentrate with this buzzing at me. I'm going to throw it away. There we go. Got it. Got rid of it. Um, come on. What can we do now? We can. How many twos have we got in the Fistamafel ring? One, two, three. Right, okay. So we can go a little bit further then. Because there are three twos in the Fistamafel ring, I need to put three twos in the orange squares. But that this box can't have a two in it because the two is here. So there must be a two in there, there must be a two in there, and there must be a two in here. Um, <laughs> um, oh, come on. What does that mean? This two, four, six triple means those, the two in box one is in over in this domino here. 22 cage. I don't know if that's really going to be useful. Um, Oh dear, sorry about this, I'm stuck. That square can't be a one because of the one that must be an orange. Same thing is true here, of course. This square also can't be a one. Good grief, okay. <laughs> so we've done really well. Have we done really well? We've done quite well, but we definitely haven't Or at least I don't think I've done well enough that I can be really remotely satisfied. Ah, ah, there's another, there's something else I've just noticed. I've got a one, two in this two by two and a one, two in this two by two. So this 12 cage can't have a one or a two in it. So it must be three, four and five. Aha, there we go. So now this is a one, two pair, which means this becomes a three five pair which means that becomes a one two pair which means this square becomes a three because it can't be a one aha we are away again we've got a one five pair here that means this square becomes a three the 11 cage now ah there's a hang on there's all sorts going on here there's a one in this domino the 11 cage i'd actually just noticed the 11 cage couldn't have a one in it because of the ones in orange but it also can't have a three in it. So the 11 cage is forced. That's two, four, five. Therefore, there's no twos over here. We've got a two in this domino. <laughs> this, is, this is an absurdly clever puzzle. It, I mean, it's absurd. There we go, I've said it. Um, why is it called quorum rings? Quorum rings. Is that something to do with the The Fistamafel ring, having to ha yeah, okay, having to have a certain number of digits. Why is it called rings, not quorum ring? That's a worrying question. Anyway, let's let's worry about that later. Um, one, two, three, four, five. So these squares here have got to be six, seven, eight, or nine. Ah, okay. This square. What's this? Remember that this is a one, two, three, four, five quintuple. So these squares are all six, sevens, eights, and nines. And that look is pairing up with its friends beneath it to create a quadruple in column nine. So these squares are all from one, two, three, four, and five now. That's definitely not a one, two, or a three. This is down to four or five. Um, and that's going to find a pair there. So whatever this is, we'll find a pair here and we'll go in one of those two cells. These squares are six. So, ah, these squares are six, seven, eight, nine. So there's now a six, seven, eight, nine quadruple in box one. And the rest of these squares have got to be one, two, three and five. 
Oh, is it the, is it the diagonal? Oh, maybe. Look, the two here is knocking itself out of two places in in box three. No. Okay. Ah. Uh, well. Okay. That's not a nine. Well, this is fascinating, but I appear to be absolutely stuck. Three has to go in one of those three cells in the central box. Nine can't go here, but just by Sudoku. I know I try to resist doing too much with Sudoku, but maybe we're going to have to. This square can't be a four because of the four up here. <laughs> uh, oh no, come on. That square's not a six. Two, four, so those, are, those are not twos. We'd already done that. Just. I have not got a Scooby Doo. Um, the thing, well, the other thing that's feeling particularly stark at the moment about this puzzle is that. Apart from the, oh, the 29. Oh, the 29 can't be relevant. No, I don't think it is. Look, I've got some, I mean, it's possible those three digits are not equal to five. It's also possible possible two of them are. That's a low digit, that's a high digit. So we're still, we're still perfectly possible of being av close to an average digit of five with those four digits. So I don't think this is going to be productive. But then what else can it be? It could be the diagonals, but I don't really have very much info on these diagonals. It's not the diagonals. What on earth is it? Nine must be in one of these th three cells in this quadruple. So nine is not there. So this is down to six, seven or eight. Oh dear, I've got a horrible feeling about this. <laughs> These squares at the bottom, we've got, we've got, we've got, well, we know that the one is in this domino. So we've actually got a one, two, three, four, five virtual quintuple in those six squares. So these squares are also six, seven, eight or nine. Ah, so now I've got a quadruple in the bottom row. I can go one, two, three, four, five along the bottom row. We know those are not twos. We know that's not a, a one or a two, so we're almost getting somewhere here. That's, ah, uh, this is not a three, four or five. That's down to one or two. I almost feel like I'd be better with high, high, low shading here. Two, that's not a four. So I've now got a one, three, five triple in this column which means the remaining remainder cells must be seven, eight, and nine. And that's not nine because that's on the diagonal with the nine that's already there. Seven, eight, nine. So I've now got a, yeah, I've got another quadruple in this box. These squares have got to be one, three, four, or five. That's that's not one, it's not three. So this, So now I've found a four, five pair out of nowhere in row seven. And this square's a naked single six, isn't it? Sorry, it sees this seven, eight, nine triple. Wow, okay, so that's a six. That means there's a six in this domino at the bottom of column three. There's no sixes in either of these squares. So that means in this quadruple, there is a six in that triple. Therefore, there's no six here. Ah, it's so close. Come on. Come on, Simon. How do you... This feels like it's going to be some sort of empty rectangle thing with low digits coming around this corner. 
Is there something that I'm meant to be appreciating about this? Oh yes, look, I've got the same thing. Sorry, I've only just noticed that this is also a quintuple here, so that's definitely not a one. That's weird. So these squares are six, seven, eight, and nine, and that's not nine. What's going on here? Two, four, five here. So this square is down to one or three. And this square is down. So there's a one, three pair going across row eight. I don't understand. I just don't understand what I, what it is I'm meant to be appreciating here. Is it? Ah, oh yeah, I was thinking about empty rectangles, wasn't I? But it doesn't quite, I don't think it quite works. What's going on? Um, sorry, as well, I'm quite sure some of you are staring at the grid, shouting at your televisions or your phones, getting cross with me. I'm not trying to be slow here i just can't see what it is i feel like i feel like we're very close to understanding it um got to put these digits into the boxes so far i've managed to put one here and one here so there's got to be one more and that's going to be in one of those two squares but that doesn't actually create a, tr a virtual triple in the box because it could be a six. Um, what else could it be? Let's get a quorum rings. It's not another. It's not another ri ring. can't even remember what the other types of, of these rings are. Let me just think about that for a second. If we were to highlight boxes 1, 3, 7 and 9. Yeah, it's, some, it's something like this, isn't it? I think the other sort of the expanded Fistemafel ring. And that's going to be Verts versus these cells here. Is that useful? Don't think so. Although it's got the same property on the diagonals that the, the sort of short form Vistemafel ring has. Actually, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. I appreciate that this highlighting is very unhelpful. It's also very unhelpful for me. I've got very high digits in these triples here. I think there's something there, you know. I think I've got difficulties with the low digits. Right. Right. Forget the fist of ring for a moment. Let's do something else. Let us do... Um, Let's do an expanded version of that. So it's the same principle, but I'm going to highlight four different sets of the digits, one to nine to start with, these four. Now, if these are four sets of the digits, one to nine, let's put them in this sack. So I emptied the sack out and then I filled it with these blue digits. Now, row one, that's a complete set of the digits, one to nine. So is column one, sorry, row, row nine, what, what? What am I doing? So is column row nine. So is column one. So is column nine. So these orange squares are four sets of the digits one to nine, except some of you will be eagle eyed and say, ah, hang on, Simon, you've made a mistake. What about this square? You're quite right. This square is double orange because in order for us to create a complete set of the digits one to nine, that, that is a complete set. And this is a complete set. So this digit here was in both of those sets. So must be included in my orange sack twice. So these digits in the corner 
are sort of double orange. I'll give them a purple flash to indicate that. Now, do what we did before. Let's find the digits that are in both sacks and remove them from both sacks. Well, that's all of these squares. We'll deal with the corners in a moment. So all of those can be thrown out of both sacks. Now let's think about the corner square. The corner square is definitely once in the blue sack, but twice in the orange sack. So if I remove, remove it once from the blue sack and once from the orange sack, it'll just be left once in the orange sack. So in other words, we can get rid of this color, 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 and just leave them as once orange. And now we should have 16 digits in blue, which we do, and 16 digits in orange. We've got 10, 13, 16, we do. So at this point, the blues and the oranges are equivalent. Now, what I was just looking at there when I was doing my other highlighting is how does this work though? Because if we ask the same question we did with the short form Fistemafel ring, where does a digit that doesn't appear in the blue cells go on the main diagonals? Well, if it's not in the blue cells, it's also not in the orange cells. So its only option is going to be to go in the middle box. And it would have to be exactly in the middle of the grid. So that in this, the geometry of Sudoku is such, in a diagonal Sudoku, I'm not about to say something stupid, I don't think I am. In a diagonal Sudoku, there can be a maximum of one digit that doesn't appear in the Fistemafel ring. Or the Fistemafel blown out ring. Now, here, that's really interesting because actually this digit in the middle is in the Fistemafel ring because it's definitely in that 789 triple. So that means there is no digit in this puzzle that does not appear in orange and does not appear in, therefore, does not also appear in blue. And that Korea, oh, this is just wonderful. This is just wonderful. Because what does that mean? Well, it means I have to put every digit, I, the, every digit in the Sudoku, the digits one to nine in the orange squares. Well, that's a 22 cage. That cannot have a one, two, three or four in it. So the, the only places I can put ones, two, threes and fours are in the corners. That is a, tri a quadruple. That is a quadruple on the digits ones, twos, threes, and fours. These are all different and they are the digits one, two, three, and four by mad, mad geometry. And Jay Dyer, this is, this is ridiculous. Right, those two squares are not twos because of the two here. So there is now definitely a two on one of those, in one of those two positions. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I still haven't put five in orange. It's not there. And it must be there somewhere. And let's just, actually, let's just take, for pure pleasure, let's just take the option of trying not to put a five in orange. If we don't put a five in orange, what do we do on the main diagonals for fives? Well, we know because there's no five in orange, we've got to put a, well, there's no five in blue either. So the five on this diagonal would have to be in one of those squares. And the five on this diagonal, because it can go in neither orange nor blue, would have to be in one of those squares. The only square that meets that criteria is this one, and five is not equal to nine, so it doesn't work. So the five must live in the 22 gauge, which means that's a five, eight, nine, uh, triple. That's not nine because it sees the nine here. That's not nine, it sees the nine above it. And we're now, that square, Yes, once this becomes a 589 triple, that becomes a naked single. That's a seven. I mean, this is, it's just magnificent. It's just magnificent. 589 here means that square has become a three. So that's not five anymore. 
Where? Oh, 5 by Sudoku has to go there in box 9. Um, therefore, that's not 5. 5 by Sudoku has to go there in box 7. There, yeah, there, there, in exactly there in box 1. We've now got a 1-3 pair here, so we can remove 1 and 3 from this square, and we've got a 4, so we've got 2 in the corner. That doesn't get a song, but it really ought to in this puzzle. We've got a 2 in the corner. Now, yes, okay, and we know that this orange, that orange group of cells, oh, this is going to get difficult now, but if you remember the original Fistimafel ring, we had, we had to put 2 in orange up here, one of those four squares. There's a 2 looking at those two, and there's this 2 looking at that one now. So I think two can only go here, which means, oh, and in this box, two goes here. Same, same sort of thing applying, isn't it? Okay, good. <laughs> uh, four in this, in this triple has got to be in the bottom row. So four is not in the corner over there. That's a one, three pair. This five gives us a four here. So we've got a 1-3 pair here and a 1-3 pair up there as well. And we've got a 4 here clipping the 4 off this, this cell. So now I've got a 1-3 pair here. This square's become a 4. I've got a 1-3, I've got 1-3 pairs all, oh no, oh goodness me. Oh that's awful, but it's fine, it's fine. I was just about to say I've got a deadly pattern on 1s and 3s, but the diagonal's going to help me, isn't it? Please diagonal help me. But this is a 1-3 pair, and we know that there must be a 4 in a corner. And the 4 in the corner, therefore, goes up here. And that's 4 in the corner. Uh, it doesn't work the same way, does it? Um, okay. What does this mean? What does it mean? Can we, oh, now, oh, okay, now I've got a 1, 3 pair on this diagonal. So in fact, these squares here have got to be from 5, 6, 7, and 8. 5, 6, 7, and 8. So there's definitely a 5 in one of those two cells. On the other diagonal, I don't have the same 1, 3 pair look. That's a shame. 3... Ah, I can label these squares up though. I've got a triple here and a triple here. So these squares must be four, six, and seven. Um, sorry, I'm not quite seeing what that means. Three in the central box. Ah, look at that. Yeah, three in the central box can only go in one place. Can only go here. That place is three in the 12. Uh, cage here. That almost feels like it might matter, doesn't it? Um, how can we make use of that? Three in this box up there has got to be in one of two cells. Yeah, that's that's perfect. That's that's what we needed. So now we should ask where three goes on this diagonal because I th it can't go on the, in this square here because of this three. It can't go in those two squares because of this three. So it can only live in the corner. And that that's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight, losing its religion. That's magnificent. That's just magnificent. Look, we're getting all sorts of threes and ones in the grid now. So. These two squares are now six. Oh, hang on. What's that's a naked single? That's just a six. So six comes out of those two squares. I've now got a seven eight pair in row eight. That loses its ability to be eight. That loses its ability to be seven or eight. This square here is a is an eight or a nine. It can't be a seven. Eight nine. Um. Hmm. Okay, six, 
Uh, okay, now I'm stuck again. Seven in this quadruple has to be in one of those cells, so it's not here. So that's one, six, or eight now. Feels like we must be almost, almost at a point where we we can finish the puzzle. Maybe the positive diagonal now. We just need sixes, sevens, and eights on this. And there's a seven or eight here, so the six must be in the middle box. Oh, I've just noticed something else. The six in the middle box here knocks a six out of those squares. That wasn't what I noticed, but it is beautiful because now I've got a five, seven, eight triple on this on the negative diagonal, which means that square's a six. And that's gorgeous because that gets me down to a one eight pair here, which means that, that we can place eight in this quadruple because it can't be in these squares. So that becomes an eight, that becomes a seven, and now that's a nine, that's a six. Let me just double check that. Is that yeah, this one didn't have the ability to be six once we got six. yes, okay. So that is that is fair. Six, nine. That's a seven, eight. This is a nine. This is eight, seven. Oh, hang on, I think I just pre I, I I said this is eight and then put a nine into it. Eight, seven, nine. Seven comes out of these cells. Yes, this is still going. Eight, nine. Okay, have we now, we've got an eight, so I see, so we're down to, we're down to a five, seven pair here. We've got a one eight in this cage, so that's got to be a seven. That fixes the five, the seven. These can't be sevens anymore, so this is a six, eight pair in the middle box. Those squares have got to be one, two, and four. Oh, yeah, and the thing I'd noticed before, which I didn't actually need, was that the fives were aligning, uh, which was going to allow me to place a five there, but now we have seem to have got there somehow by Sudoku. So that's a four, that's a five. That's a four. Can we do this one? That's, that's not seven anymore, and that's not four anymore. I feel like something's gone wrong in the sense of where's two in this where's two in this row yeah it must be here okay I don't it's just a it's felt like a strangely one digit that I'm not sure quite how I got it one two four here so this is now six this is four I've now got a one two pair in column five so this square's become eight that's become a one that's not five so I've got a two four pair so that's not four Good grief, that's not five. There's all sorts of eliminations going on now. This square is an eight, so that's a five. That's not seven. Okay. That six is giving us an eight over on that side of the grid. That's giving us a seven over on the other side of the grid again. Oh, so now, oh look, no, I've ha I have can't resolve that. I've got an 8, 9, 6, 8, and 6, 9. So that's a 6, 8, 9 triple with a 1, 2 pair. How annoying. Okay. Um, what's going on? That can't be a 2. Ah, and it can't be a 5. So there you go. That's going to be 4. That's 2. That's 5. That's now 4. Got a one two funny pattern in those cells, which is a bit worrying actually. That can't be a four anymore. So this is the four in row two. What well, how do we resolve this? That's not a seven. <laughs> this diagonal Oh, I know what it'll be. It'll be this twenty nine clue, won't it? Oh goodness me, I've not even looked at this yet. Um, so we need the, the cells that aren't these two threes to add up to 23. So if we max those out, oh, we get way over 23. If we minimize them, we get 12, 21. Oh, so there are, okay, there is a couple of degrees of freedom there at least. Can we force it? Yeah, okay, that's interesting. If we make that a six, that looks like it's gonna max these two out. 
if we make this a 6, this has to be an 8, because that's going to be a 9. So that's going to be an 8, and that's going to be a 9. And have I broken it now? 23? Yes, I have. If, if, so if you make this a 6, these squares already add up to 23 before you count these two in. And you can see those two are adding up to at least 7, if, even if we minimise them. And that will get us to 30, not 29. That's gorgeous. That's another gorgeous step. So this is 8. This is 6. That's a 9. That's a 6. This is a 9. This is an 8. Now this is a 9, this is a 6, 7, 9, 8 here, 7 and 6 here. Oh, I see, and we're left with the 1s and 2s pattern, which will also be... Res so the selection of this 29 diagonal is doing double duty, look. We've got 18, 27, we need two more, so we've got to put two on the diagonal, and in doing that, we get the rest of it finished. Oh my goodness me, that is absolutely brilliant. Yes, yes, 51 minutes of magnificence from Jay Dyer. Jay, take a bow. That, that's, inc that's just an extraordinary puzzle. The, the moment I realised that this is a 1, 2, 3, 4 quadruple, that is one of the great moments of my solving life. That is so clever. Uh, and, yeah, I, did you set this? I wonder if you set this as a response to the... Was it, um, who was it? Was it Mr. Potato Head or something like that? Potato, Potato, it was, or it was a Sonic person or someone who did this puzzle the other day where we discovered things about Knight's Moves. Um, in, so we discovered in a Knight's Move Sudoku, you couldn't have more than one digit that wasn't on the Fistimafel ring because that one digit had to end up in the middle of the grid. And if there were two digits, you'd simultaneously make Schrodinger cells again. And this almost feels like a response to that, because I, oh, I certainly never realised that in a diagonal Sudoku, the same thing applies. But it applies, I wonder if it's even more powerful, because it applies not just to the Fistmafel ring itself, but also to this sort of this this one I've got in the grid here, which is the expanded Fistimafel ring. I hope Fistimafel himself watches this video. I'd love to know if he was aware of this. Um, I loved that. I loved it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me uh, battle through it. It's a bit of a battle, but what a, what a journey it was. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.